Hey, Warpug. So, J Mac1996 wanted me to check out The Fall of Reach, the UNSC's Darkest Hour by Pancreas No Works, and I'm surprised that I didn't get into this one a long time ago. So, I enjoy the way that Pancreas No Works puts out his puts out lore, puts out his whole thing. But um, I'm just now starting to get back into Halo lore in and of itself. I was on a very long hiatus from it. Um, I'm just now starting to creep back into the the lore, uh, the the entire universe. As a matter of fact, um, I never played the Halo games until a few years ago, and then I just pretty much binged one through four and Reach. Um, so. My cat is demanding attention. I'm not going to give it to her because she is a lush and she will never stop. So we're going to get into this. Guys, Pancake Snow Works, all of his links are going to be in the description down below. I'm hoping to have the video on the Morty and Iron Guard finished by this weekend. We will find out. I do not quite know yet, but we will learn if uh, I can overcome the challenges of editing because my editor hates me. It has, my editor has crashed about seven times. It is just the way it is. Will you stop? This cat does not give up, man. <sighs> Let's just get into it. Come on, he clicked the button. You've probably noticed by this point, but I quite like Halo. Yes. I really like Halo, even. It's got a magical mix of grimdark and hopefulness combined with some of the best aesthetics in sci-fi that really make it stand out. Also, I was a kid during the Halo Reach in three days, so this franchise holds more nostalgia for me than pretty much anything on the planet. But I would say that the Halo you see in the games is usually pretty different from the deeper Halo lore. Yeah. You've got Master Chief clapping alien cheeks every five seconds and single-handedly turning the tide of a war that by all accounts should have ended with human extinction. And there's the Foreigner stuff, which is basically magic or how advanced it is, and while the games can certainly get dark, such as whenever the Flood show up, they don't often feel hopeless. Right. And even ODST, the masterpiece that it is, doesn't have that vibe. Things looking rough? Oh, absolutely. But I never felt hopeless playing it. Even when Romeo... I did play ODST, and I'm telling you, um, some parts of this game were not, uh, not pleasant. Not pleasant at all. ...gets his lung gouged into, he's more or less fine by the end of the day. It's yeah. a shame Mickey didn't bite the bullet, though. Treacherous little weasel. But one game in Halo does have that tone, of near-utter hopelessness in the fate of monstrous odds. No magical foreigner artifacts or last-ditch gambits to save the day, just defeat. While it's a prequel, so we know that in the end, things turn out somewhat well, for the characters present during these events, this is one step above the end of the human race. Yeah. Halo Re Reach did do, didn't do me any favors when I played it, I'm telling you that right now. And I actually had the, I actually had the VODs on somewhere on this channel. Reach, a game that has been sucked off by many a content creator, and I'm no different. This isn't a video just about the plot of the game, though it will feature heavily, because there's at least one novel and some other sources on what happened during this fateful battle. So get nice and comfortable while I tell you about the story of the Fall of Reach, a cozy little tale of planetary destruction and the time aliens kicked humanity straight in the balls. First off, some background. If you're familiar with Halo, you'll know that humanity have been fighting a losing war against the Covenant for 30 years by this point. Yep. If you aren't familiar with Halo, then you should know that humanity have been fighting a losing war against the Covenant <laughs> for 30 years by this point. Setback after setback, loss after loss, and overall, things weren't looking too good. In fact, and they were pretty much hiding it from everybody. I'd go as far as saying they look downright awful. As you can probably guess, the story focuses around the titular planet of Reach. Reach's role in the setting was that of humanity's chief industrial center for the UNSC war machine. Imagine it's sort of like what Mars is to the Imperium, and you've got a rough idea of what Reach was. It was also the unofficial homeworld of the Spartan Twos, as all of them were kidnapped and brought to Reach to become demigods of war. Hooray! So now picture Mars as also being the home of all the space marines from the first few foundings. And it was also a major economic hub, industrial oh. center and military training grounds, and command location on top of being the place where they pump out warships like nobody's business. So yeah, kind of an important place that the UNSC wanted to keep hidden from the Covenant, given that their war effort more or less entirely revolved around it by this point. It was second only to Earth in strategic, symbolic, military, and really any other kind of importance you can think of, more so than Earth or the military aspects, in fact. 
Oh, and because this planet wasn't important enough already, there's also a shitload of foreigner artifacts buried beneath it. Oh, hooray! So to keep comparing it to 40k, imagine an entire Necron tomb world with pretty much zero defenses to keep out the grave robbers. Though the location of Earth and Reach had been kept hidden from the Covenant thus far, the UNSC's Office of Naval Intelligence estimated that the Covenant would find the system Reach was located in within five months on July 19th, 2552. Skirmishes between the Covenant and humanity began on July 23rd, 2552. Good job. Oni actually did a good thing at one point in his history. I just can't tell you what it is, because I really don't know. Job, Oni analysis. Four days is technically within five months. You know, I bet if this involved kidnapping children in some way, Oni could have given a 100% accurate report down to the minute. <laughs> As for how the Covenant actually found Reach, the commander of the fleet that would soon be showing up had found a luminary to help him find foreigner relics, and Reach had lit up like a goddamn Christmas tree. The Elite didn't even know that the planet was basically the most important one in all of humanity. In fact, he didn't even give a shit about any humans he might have found. He just saw a whole bunch of his god's toys lying around and went to grab the goods. First contact was depicted in Halo Reach, where a noble team was sent to investigate what they believed to be insurrectionist activity. Turns out, it was aliens. Jesus Christ, Oni, they cannot do anything correctly when it's not a human rights violation. Right. And so what the Covenant confirmed to be on Reach, Winter Contingency was enacted. This means that every other thing that might have been happening on Reach was dropped, because with this announcement, it meant that humanity's worst nightmare had finally been realized. This also involved more or less canceling a last-ditch effort by the Spartan Twos to try and negotiate a peace deal by attempting to kidnap a prophet, one of the Covenant's religious figures and leaders of the Coalition. After all, it's rather hard to get ready for such a thing when you're being attacked from every possible angle. The initial stages of the battle for Reach were following the protocol set in place by Winter Contingency. That's a really boring way to put it, so let me simplify for you. Okay. Aliens are on the planet, shoot them dead wherever you see them. And surely enough, that's what the UNSC went to work doing. One of the first places the Covenant attacked was Sword Base, an only research facility, because that luminary thing was pointing below it and the Covenant wanted all those sweet, sweet foreigner goods. Thankfully for humanity, this attack took place during a playable mission in a Halo game, so Yay. the forces were handily routed and Sword Base was secured. They even took out a Covenant Corvette. Aren't Mac cannons just beautiful? Yes. The UNSC as a whole wouldn't do so hot in 40k, but orbital Mac batteries? Those will put the hurt on any warship. Also, shout out to Carter for putting Halsey in her place here. When I first played Reach, I didn't quite appreciate just how cool it is that Carter owns owned her like this. I mean, she created the Spartan. She's got to be pretty cool, right? Then I kept learning more about Halo and reading more books, and now I'm mostly just upset he didn't shoot her in the face. Or Cat, she sassed her too. Really? Anyone there? Say what you want about newer Halo games, but the opening of Halo 4 being some Oni spook calling her out on kidnapping children and accidentally creating superheroes to kill aliens with is very good stuff. Upon yeah, Noble Team it was. a cloaked landing site where the Covenant was staging much of the initial invasion from, the battle went from small-scale skirmishes to full-blown war zones across the planet. Several weeks into the battle proper, and in the coolest cutscene in a video game ever, Noble Team leads an assault to take out this landing site and kill any split-lift bastards ballsy enough to try and start shit on their planet. Scorpions, warthogs, falcons, if it could move and had a gun on it, it was thrown at the Coven to get them off the planet. And initially, there was some success to this. The various pylons and anti-air weapons the Coven had set up were destroyed by the combined efforts of Noble Team and all of these goddamn UNSC Army troops. Holy shit, this mission is awesome! <laughs> to make sure the job was done, they even authorized the use of Mac rounds in atmosphere. To make sure everything was killed real good, the UNSC wasn't taking any chances. Unfortunately for humanity, however, let's look at some basic stats real quick. The ship shown here is a Paris-class heavy frigate, measuring a bit over half a kilometer in length. Now here's the thing, okay? The one thing I've loved about the UNSC ships overall, like, if you could ask me the one thing I love about them, is there's no questioning that this is a warship. It looks like an assault rifle, okay? If you look at it from the side, it looks like an assault rifle. I'm just saying. I might be coked out of my mind saying that, but at the same time, the comparison can be made. A Covenant Shawada class supercarrier is 28 kilometers in length. Which of these ships do you think is going to win in a fight? Ah. Remember what I said about things feeling hopeless? Imagine being one of the UNSC troops in that battle. Yeah. A spaceborne vessel comes in and fires its main gun, obliterating its target. You celebrate what's sure to be a resounding victory, and then it's really bright for a moment, and the ship is in pieces. Fellas, can we get an F in the chat for the UNSC Grafton? The Covenant also took sword base during this mission, so thanks, Halsey. I don't think I can blame that on you, but I'm gonna try. That Go for it. said, things weren't quite screwed yet. The Covenant was- I'm not gonna blame you. I'm really not gonna blame you if you blame Halsey for this, because for, for the love of God- Balls deep into reach at this point, though they were getting there. 
And from here, both sides continue escalating the conflict because it's do or die on several levels. For humanity, it's simple. Lose the planet, lose the war. For the Covenant, however, that whole religious artifact search was weighing heavily on the leader of the assault. He had finally realized just what he was dealing with and how unprepared he was for this operation. His ground teams had still only been able to find somewhere between jack and shit numbers of foreigner artifacts. <laughs> and meanwhile, every time he sent a group of ships to engage the UNSC, they'd be intercepted by human ships and blown out of the atmosphere by Mac cannons. Reach's defenses, after all, were second only to Earth's, and unlike Earth, Reach had no supply chain issues because everything the UNSC was producing came from Reach. A reinforcement fleet had arrived from the Covenant to help him out, but as far as this four-jawed admiral was concerned, that just meant the Prophets were getting impatient. Meanwhile, the UNSC had redeployed 60% of its entire fleet to Reach. Can you imagine that? Imagine if, say, 60% of the Imperium's entire navy was sent to Cadia. Right. Adon wouldn't have been able to get out of the Eye of Terror before he exploded. There may have been some brilliant tactics involved in the siege of Reach, but their strategic approach was pretty much to just throw everything they have and hope things turn out alright. Fun fact, there was also a hurricane raging on Reach during the invasion. Yay! It's like the planet itself was telling the Covenant to fuck off. Noble team went to work once more to try and break this stalemate, infiltrating the Covenant's supercarrier in charge of this whole mess with the intent to destroy it with a jury-rigged bomb made out of a slipspace drive that a frigate had lent them. That was a lot of lore-based techno-jargon nonsense, so let me simplify that for you. Go for Take it! Take FTL drive, put it in Covenant ship, turn it on, and watch the Covenant vanish. It was successful, and the carrier, alongside the commander of the operation, were sent straight to whatever the hell dimension Slipspace is, alongside several other Covenant ships nearby. Don't mm -hmm. screw around with Slipspace Drive, kids. That's a great way to get unpersoned. There's no Chaos Gods to pray to in desperate futility either, like with a warp drive failure. You're just gone. This unfortunately came at the cost of one of the few remaining Spartan twos, George of Noble Team. Fellas, I know I just asked for this, but can we get an F in the chat for George? If nothing else, his last wish was honored. Tell him to make it count. And with that being said, it's time for some real hopelessness. Yeah. You know the cutscene. I've showed it on this channel before. <sighs> Brace yourself. Hell, I've had the Remembrancer voice over it. Go subscribe to him, by the way, and the rest of the lore crime fellas while you're at it, plug plug. But just for funsies, let's look at the cutscene in all its glory so you can really appreciate what happens right after the UNSC's successful Hail Mary. Slipspace rupture detected. Amethystion control. Reading multiple pings below the orbital defense. Slipspace rupture detected. Yeah, we're picking up anomalies too. Are you reading this? Multiple covenant signatures. Slipspace rupture detected. Anyone who's there are everywhere. Slipspace rupture detected. The whole damn covenant fleet. Slipspace rupture detected. 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 Slipspace Oh, I was feeling so good before that cutscene. I was feeling so good before that cutscene. There were so many cutscenes in here that just made you hate everything. This because they really wanted to board that supercarrier and take it over so they could go ahead with the plan to kidnap a prophet. Because that's the most pressing issue facing them right now. The largest Covenant fleet you've seen up to this point just showed up to turn your planet into stained glass, but no, keep trying to kidnap priests with those super soldiers you're holding back from actually helping. At this point, the Covenant just started landing wherever they could. No more stealth operations like with earlier where they were hunting for artifacts. The Covenant was waging war now. While still hunting for artifacts as their religion dictated, it was now business as usual for them. Deploy overwhelming force and wipe out any and all human life located on Reach. The orbital Mac cannons, while still wiping out Covenant ships left and right, were now being targeted and destroyed by both a mass Covenant assault combined with previously unknown battleships with sniper-like capabilities. Yay. The Halcyon-class cruiser Pillar of Autumn, hope that name sounds familiar to you, was one of the many ships involved in the space battles over Reach. It had intended to go ahead with Operation Kidnap the Pope anyways, when, surprise surprise, <laughs> another Covenant fleet showed up helmed by the elite Thel Vatimi, also known as the Arbiter, though that doesn't happen quite yet. At this point, it's nearly August 30th. The battle had been going on for over a month and things were getting more and more grim for the UNSC. Over the course of the battle, civilians had begun to be pulled off the doomed world, such as during the evacuation of the city of New Alexandria. Mm -hmm. Despite this, the overall situation was that the UNSC was getting its ass handed to it on a silver platter while the Covenant told them to bite the pillow. Spaceborne assets continue to be destroyed despite a steady stream of reinforcements, and remember that these are 60% of the remaining UNSC ships. At this point, it's not even a Hail Mary, it's just a last stand to take as many of them out with the UNSC as possible. Yep. The situation on the ground was equally fucked. For every ship that successfully got civilians off the planet, there were another 10 either blown out of the sky or taken out before they could even lift off. Arguably, one of the worst parts of this was that the authorities kept just how bad things were in the dark from the general populace, which is very much in line with how the UNSC generally handled public knowledge of the war but still kind of messed up for a lot most people didn't know that 
humanity was involved with a war at this point, if I remember in Halo lore correctly. They just didn't know. They had no idea. And then, like, imagine you don't know that there's a war at all, and then all of a sudden you get the news that... <laughs> oh, my God. Imagine you live in, I don't know... Imagine you live in New, in New York, and then you think everything's going fine, everything's going great, everything's great, and then one day you wake up and there's a news report that St. Louis, Missouri has been taken over by aliens that have conquered everything else surrounding that, and they're currently pushing lines forward to New York. I mean... A lot of people, they thought that the army had the landing zones contained and things were going well. Then it swimming kicked down the door going and gunned down their family. And everyone was fully aware of just how bad things were. Individual soldiers and civilians might have had some amount of hope left, but anyone with any amount of clearance knows the situation for what it really is. Spartan Cat of Noble Team did that funny thing where her shield no. got impeded from the glassing and her brain got needle rifled, and the ground forces overall continued to lose ground as the covenant. That was seriously... That was that was probably the worst because it just came out of nowhere. It was just like I was just like I don't know. It had begun an invasion in earnest. Cities were being glassed daily, and you could see the fires on the planet from orbit as the inevitable Covenant victory took hold. On August 30th, the final day, things had come to a head. Rather than continuing to throw themselves against the remaining Mac batteries and lose more ships than they'd like, Covenant forces instead landed on the planet near the generators, powering said Max. Can't really bombard the thing keeping you powered, and even if they could and were willing to do so, a sustained barment from orbital Mac cannons is the kind of thing that ruptures a planet's crust. So the Spartan 2s are finally in the game properly now. Just in time to not really make a difference because yeah. while they were able to defend the power stations with some success, even evacuating a high ranking admiral who would prank the Covenant pretty hard shortly afterwards, Reach's defeat was inevitable by this point. A majority of the few remaining Spartan twos were killed in battle, and the defense stations remaining would not be enough to defend Reach with any amount of meaningful resistance. Take out a couple more Xenos with them? Absolutely. But hold off the Covenant? Not a chance in hell. The final stages of the Battle of Reach consisted largely of the UNSC trying to get its affairs in order if things went too far south. The right. Katana fragment Halsey was using to dick around with foreigner stuff was evacuated, and Halsey was brought to a separate location on Reach. Her and some others would be involved in some shenanigans that happened with foreigner technology and fun stuff like that, but that's a whole other story. From there, the final acts of Reach once again centers around Noble Team, with a little bit of Master Chief in the Fall of Reach novel. Master Chief and some other Spartan 2s were deployed to a space station to scrub out of vital data, and then he and the Spartan Linda were brought to the Pillar of Autumn. Linda was clinically dead, which sucks for her, but UNSC Tech is pretty good, so she could still potentially be saved. Okay. Meanwhile, Noble Team was going through it. George is dead, Cat's dead, and June realized he was in a prequel, and dipped out on the first transport to the Halo Extended Universe. There you go. By this point, the military was either evacuating as fast as it could or was splattered all over the ground. The last remaining battle of note was that of Azov's shipyard. Noble Team was able to successfully deliver the Cortana fragment to Captain Keys containing vital foreigner data that would be put to use in the coming months, but it came at a cost, as you should expect by this point. Carter sacrificed himself because while he didn't have the firepower to get Noble Six and Emil to the shipyard, he had the mass. Emil was cheap shotted by some zealot bastard, and Noble Six remained behind to fire on a Covenant battle cruiser and ensure the Pillar of Autumn could escape the doomed world. On August 30th, 2552, the Battle of Reach had officially ended with the escape of the Autumn away from the planet. A dozen Covenant ships followed in pursuit suit, and the events of that little escapade are well Halo documented, one. shall we say. The aftermath of the battle does have several things worth talking about, but at another point in time. For the fall of Reach itself, the final thing I think is worth mentioning is Noble Six's last stand. At that point in time, they were more or less the last remaining soldier openly holding their ground on Reach. It's mm. very worth mentioning that canonically, Noble Six's final stand lasted several hours and involved an entire Covenant army going to fight them. Countless Banshees, Wraiths, and other supporting units on top of thousands of Covenant infantry were required to take this battle bastard down. Noble Six destroyed wave after wave of Covenant forces before finally being killed by a group of elites. And yes, they're very much dead. They're not in a cave somewhere, they bit the dust. Fellas, I know this is the third time I've made this joke, but can we get an F in the chat for Noble Six? Whether you had them be male or female, whatever armor configuration you had them equipped with by the time of Lone Wolf, they earned the designation of hyper-lethal without a doubt. And <laughs> and with their death, Reach had officially fallen. And honestly, this is one of my favorite stories slash events in Halo, and sci-fi in general for that matter. 
In my favorite universes of Warhammer and Halo, there's oftentimes a grand picture being worked towards, or an air of mysticism somewhat present. Like when you're fighting demons from hell, there's some grander things at work than this just being a battle. Or True. the battle itself is over some ancient artifact, or to perform some ritual to allow something like a deity to be born, or for something to be summoned into real space from ages past. And that's just within Warhammer. Within most other Halo games, it'll be ultimately about the Forerunners and their ancient, almost magical technology magical. to the galaxy. Or how the Flood, a parasite from beyond the galaxy forged from the remains of living gods, has returned to eat everyone. That's still somewhat present in Reach, but it's not the focus at all. Well, yes, you fight in front of the Forerunner RGB gaming structures and the Covenant find Reach initially because of the Forerunner artifact GPS thing, there's not really any focus on either of those things. The first one holds no impact on the UNSC because the Forerunner structure itself does doesn't hold any potential avenue to victory. It's just a big wall that some scientist lady says is super important for real guys. As for the Covenant finding reach because of the artifacts, again, these artifacts play no part in the battle at large. They cause the initial invasion, but then it turns into just another invasion, albeit one that's the largest of the war. The eventual result of Halsey's research into the Forerunners is very specifically not using the supposed discovery against the Covenant, because if they do, everything ever dies. True. At the end of the day, this is just a sci-fi war story, and a pretty goddamn grim one. The ending scene may involve Noble Six's helmet being shown in a field of green showing things are recovering, but that's decades after the fact and only because of a concentrated terraforming effort. Yeah. We know that it leads to John Halo finding the rings and ending the war later down the line, but it hardly makes the events that happen any less miserable. As far as the tone of the story goes, everyone involved is pretty convinced the end isn't far off. Humanity's strongest bastion has been found, and it's not gonna hold. And with it gone, there's almost nothing left to produce more weapons with. Supplies are gone, manpower's been obliterated because 60% of the UNSC fleet threw themselves into the fire in a desperate hope to hold off the Covenant, and right. it didn't work. The novelization and Halo Reach itself are both essentially one long rearguard action to try and get something out of this mess. A mess where every alien they kill is replaced with 10 more as the Covenant just keep warping in more reinforcements. It's a brutal war story where defeat is a foregone conclusion. Almost everyone in the lore reacts to the Covenant finding Reach with either terror or resignation, and even the marketing for this goddamn shit show was from the beginning, you know the end. Reach may not have led to the end of humanity, we know that from the fact it's a prequel, but as far as the universe was concerned, it was five minutes before that inevitability. Oh, yeah. Halo nowadays has turned into an endless stream of one-upping the last thing. You've suddenly got the banished being portrayed as a threat equal to the Covenant, or whatever the hell the Endless are, <laughs> Reach wasn't like that. The whole story is a tale of humanity and gets shit pushed in, where the greatest victory to be had is one guy and his VTuber girlfriend escaping into the void to hopefully find something helpful. Its hopeful end only exists for us, because we know the war ends and humanity is saved, and god damn it, I love it. Nostalgia aside, and yes, I admit there's a lot of that, this story both in the books, the game, and as a general lore event are one of my favorites. But I can only fillet Halo for so long before it gets tiring even to me, so I'll just leave it off with this. While the game's atmosphere and tone are that of utter futility, it's also one of defiance. Humanity might be going down, but not easily. And in a showing of bravery that would make the Imperial Guard salute, the UNSC held the line on reach until the planet was literally melting into glass, and then reclaimed it decades later. Yep. More recently, Halo's been double downing more and more on the UNSC being this ultra-fascist nightmare state trying to be a bargain brand Imperium of Man like what every Stellaris player makes. As shown in the fall of Reach, they're an organization doing its best in a situation that's beyond hopeless. No soldier on that planet went down easy, and every inch of soil burned was paid for in covey blood. I'm still choosing elite preferred species when I have a choice in the matter, however. <laughs> As always, thank you to my wonderful channel members. You are the Assad Shipyards to my it, reach. Halsey a launch sucks, I Seriously though, this cutscene would have been just perfect if Cat punched through the glass and crushed Halsey's head like a grape. Cat best girl, 10 out of 10. Except when she's driving. Holy shit. At least June <laughs> was gonna put a bull in her skull if the Covenant were able to capture her, or looked like they were going to capture her, or even appeared on radar within a couple miles of them. Also, can you imagine if Emil didn't get stabbed and Noble Six was able to board the Pillar of Autumn? Combat Evolved would have been three levels long and consist of nothing but the Covenant getting their shit pushed in. Wouldn't have even had time to unleash the Flood. They would have been assassinated before they could even read the Don't Dead Open inside scrawled on the containment chamber. <laughs> oh. If I can recommend a single Halo game if I could only tell you to play one, if I could only tell you to play one Halo game, I'd tell you to play Reach. Because the whole thing is one continuous nightmare. It starts off fun, light, all this other kind of stuff, and then it starts getting bad. And then it just goes from bad to worse to nightmarish, and then you do, like... 
like I'm I just remember sitting there looking at this uh, looking at my um looking at my screen after the pillow of autumn takes off and the thing comes up and you're like what am, what am I supposed to do and it just pops up survive and I'm like what the hell and they just don't stop coming the enemies do not stop coming um It was very depressing. It was very like Cat's death was the worst. Cat's death was the worst for me because it took it, it took me by complete surprise, out of nowhere. No heroic sacrifice, just gone. Um, ten out of ten would play again. It's easily the best of the Halo games in my in my book. Before I played that, before I had played, um. Before I had played Reach, um, every single game was I, I considered better. Halo 1, 2, uh, 3, ODST, and then I played Reach. And every single one was better than the last until I got to Reach. And then it was just like, okay, we're here. This is, this is peak. Sorry for the pug noises, guys. The pug is uh, in the back right now. She's... She's making pug noises. I'm going to get out from here. I will see you guys next time. All of Pancreas Works and No Works links are going to be in the description down below. Remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. <sighs> Reach was such a good game. And cats shouldn't have gone out like that.